Welcome back, boys and girls, to Professor Glenmo's Innovation and Technology. Today, we're continuing our journey into the world of solar technology. After understanding how polysilicon was made, we now explore how it's transformed into a monocrystalline ball or ingot, the foundation of solar cells. Our journey starts with high purity polysilicon chunks, like the ones we talked about last time. These chunks are the raw material for creating monocrystalline silicon ball, a single continuous crystal structure that's essential for high efficiency solar cells. The transformation takes place through a fascinating process called the Krakowski method. Uh, let's see how it works. First, the polysilicon chunks, like the one inside this little tube here, are heated inside a furnace to incredibly high temperatures. We're talking of temperatures over 1400 degrees Celsius. A carefully selected seed crystal with the desired crystal orientation is then dipped into the molten silicon, and this is where the magic happens. The seed crystal slowly rotates and is pulled upwards. As it's lifted, molten silicon attaches and solidifies, matching the crystal structure. Uh, this process is meticulously controlled to ensure a uniform crystal growth. We, we want this to be a nice uh, cylinder, not going woo 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 woo. Anyway. The growing of the cylinder crystal or ball can take up to several days to form, depending on the desired size. Once complete, the ball is carefully cooled to prevent any cracks and imperfections. And there you have it. The ball is then sliced into thin little wafers, like this one, which are the building blocks of solar cells. Well, in fact, this is a solar cell. So the wafers are then doped and a little grid put on the front, and that is what we call a solar cell. These solar cells, uh, can end up in solar panels, they can end up on satellites, uh, and the same material, the uh, really high purified uh, silicon, can be made into uh, semiconductor materials that we use in everyday objects. Anyway, the journey from polysilicon, this stuff, <laughs> all the way through from a, to a ball to a solar cell, is the key to harnessing the sun's energy efficiency. So thanks to the technology, we're able to capture solar energy more efficiently than ever before, paving the way for a greener future. Oh, don't I feel good already? Oh well, thank you boys and girls for joining us on this enlightening journey and keep tuning in for more insights into the technology that shape our world. Until next time, stay curious.